need a new GPU? Grab this XFX Play Hard RX 570 from at Best Buy for only $279 and get the Quake Champions pack free. Good news! At Best Buy has XFX Radeon RX 570s back in stock and at a great price of $279.99. Whose side are you on? You can't both imply that retailers are gouging consumers to rake in cash on the mining boom and simultaneously promote said retailers gouged prices and sales of which there are often 20% discounts on something that's overpriced by more than $100 already. It doesn't work. These two ideas, they don't mesh together and it just looks two-faced. And here's the thing. These tweets from AMD, they're promoting an RX 570. It is cheaper than it was, technically, but it's still encouraging a price which is fully $100 over MSRP. And not just over MSRP, but over what the card used to be available at before all the mining business. And that's not to say it's AMD's fault that the prices are high. AMD keeps trying to say that it's not their fault, in fact. They have implied, maybe not directly said on record, but there's the implication in all of the statements that have gone out to different publications that, look, this is the retailer's gouging or someone else in the chain. You've, ultimately, you've got AMD, who work with Global Foundries and all of them. AMD ships to someone, AIB partners, distributors, uh, suppliers, retailers, they're all in the chain. Someone in there charges more. But to then go and promote those higher prices after sort of indirectly condemning them doesn't sit right. And the thing is that ultimately AMD is publicly encouraging these higher prices. But AMD is in a tough spot. Let's be fair to them here. AMD has to promote their partners. They can't very well say Best Buy is gouging you. Don't buy from them. That, that probably wouldn't go over too well. And AMD doesn't have the command to do that type of thing. So it's a hard spot. They can't just straight condemn the prices and the retailers calling them the cause of the price, but they also have to, you know, they have to sell the product and also have to look good to consumers. And part of looking good to consumers is saying, we're on your side. We, we don't set these prices. We don't control the prices. We are at the whim, at the command of the retailers, at the distributors, at the AIB partners, whomever in the chain is causing this increase. And likely it's a bit everywhere. All the way down the line, there's probably slight increases that amount to this $100 upcharge on a video card, which is, at, at launch anyway, was actually a great value. $280 though? No way. Do not do not buy an RX 570 for $280. Please don't do that. Please. AMD has now become the proverbial accessory to a crime against consumers. Best Buy might be robbing the bank, but AMD is holding the bag open as the retailer furiously stuffs it with cash. AMD's tweets are openly encouraging these inflated prices, and that's just a few months after condemnation to a room full of press using such phrases as, we can't hold a gun to the retailer's heads to get the price down implied. So there are two different stories here. So the RX 570, when we reviewed it, just to remind everyone, before people start screaming shill because we're pointing out something which is clearly a bad deal right now, to remind everyone, the RX 570 was pretty highly received. So was the 470, in fact, with our outlet. And the price then was about $180. It kind of spiked up to $200. And, and sadly, if you go look at the review, we thought $200 was an overcharge. We thought that was retailers cashing in or board partners cashing in. Well, how little we knew about what would happen eventually, but that's not the point. The point is that at the 180th, $200 mark, it wasn't a bad buy. You could more or less equalize for the missing shaders on the 570 versus the 580 by overclocking, just like the 56 versus the 64. That's how these cards tend to work. So it was a good deal. It outperformed the 1050 Ti somewhat significantly at times. You're looking at with a 1050 Ti, you get anywhere from 58 to 75% of the performance of the 570. And it was only about $30 cheaper at the time. So you're looking at a, almost a dollar for dollar performance increase in some titles and even better in many cases. Now though, that card has stayed about the same, $145, but the 570 has gone up to 280, apparently on sale with Quake. Uh, and you're still at the same performance difference, 58, 
to 75 percent of a 570 for now half the price but even the 1050 ti we don't have to stop there you look at a 1063 gigabyte and this isn't to say nvidia is the better buy it's just well i guess it sort of is because when you're looking at prices of 280 dollars for what effectively constitutes some performance in between a 1050 ti and a 1060 that's a really bad deal and gamers shouldn't be buying into it and ultimately everyone says vote with your wallet but there's more to that than just voting with your wallet you have to look out for yourself as a consumer if 280 dollars is considered a good price when it was a lot less than that previously even if it seems like a good price now that doesn't mean you have to buy it if you desperately need a gpu consider the alternatives consider used consider pulling one out of one of your old systems and using it while we wait for things to calm down either mining calms down or it keeps taking off like a rocket and amd and nvidia pump out more supply one of those two things should happen eventually so you wait for one of those two things or you buy an alternative 1063 gigabyte cards are still 210 dollars and some are plus or minus 10 bucks on that and they outperform an rx 570 in nearly all games that we've tested 1066 gigabyte cards are presently about 280 dollars coincidentally that is the cost of the RX 570 with Best Buy's very generous discount of 20% off of an overpriced upcharge of about 80%. So thank you, Best Buy. We appreciate that. Really great to know you're looking out for consumers. And AMD, it's great to see that you encourage those upcharges. AMD may be obligated to share that information. They might have an agreement with Best Buy. They might have a social media exchange of some kind with XFX. No matter where you look at it, AMD is in a hard spot, but that doesn't excuse what amounts to really just encouraging ripping off the consumer. That's what this is at this point. And it's sad because AMD tried to take the stance of we're on the consumer's side, things are overpriced, we can't control it, look, we'll try and pump out more supply, we'll try and fix this, and then they promote it. So, uh, again, I ask, Whose side are you on? Pick one. Uh, so here's the other, the other aspect of this. Uh, looking at the deal. So you go to the page that they link to. First of all, there's a typo. It says you get a game code for the PS3. It's, it's actually PC. It'd be kind of stupid if you bought a video card for a PC. You got a game code for a PS3. Uh, so maybe, maybe check that Best Buy. Uh, the other thing is it's a $30 value game code. That's not a, that doesn't make the deal any better. But if you go look at Newegg and how they value that code, Newegg values it at more than you pay on Steam to get the full game, all of it. Not just the character pack, whatever, which basically constitutes the entire game today. But you look at the retailers and they value these codes that AMD is bundling with the stuff as higher than the actual cost of those games to buy. And that's to make it look like a better deal. It's Again, it comes back to the mining situation where offsetting the price by that much extra helps offset the value theoretically to someone like a miner. But it also is just flat wrong. That's not the price of the product. So you can't just fudge the price until it fits whatever narrative you're trying to sell. So that's on Newegg for that one. Best Buy's got their own problems. AMD clearly has their own problems. They all have problems in this chain. What I'm trying to say is you don't need to feed into it too. Just because AMD and Best Buy together are now trying to create a new norm of the RX 570 being $280 as the new norm and trying to make everyone feel like that is the, that's a good price. That's the right price to pay for it. Don't feed into it. Just wait, wait for the prices to come down, buy something else, buy used, rip something out of another system, use an IGP, whatever but feeding into that is only going to perpetuate it what needs to happen is these companies need to learn if supply is so much of an issue maybe consider that either you set your prices higher or you make more of the product so that's all this is about it's about just you know look out for yourself when buying a card right now and it's sad it's it's disappointing i'm disappointed that a card which was very competitive and good the rx 570 at its launch price is now being promoted so much higher than it used to be and there are a lot of 
people who should receive blame for that. But, I mean, you look at it this way. The 1063 gigabyte cards, if you need a video card today, they're 210 plus or minus 10 bucks on average. The GTX 1060 6 gigabyte cards are the same price as the 570. And remember, the, the 570 doesn't compete with the 1060. The 580 or 480 was the intended competitor to the 1060. So doing a head-to-head -head price match right now is not where the competition is. It, you have to look at the initial launch and who the intended competitor was in terms of card. And it wasn't the 570 for the 1060. That's not how it ever was until just recently. So anything else is just trying to change the story and manipulate it into a point where you feel like as a consumer, these cards are price matched, so they compete, so I should buy the one that, well, whatever it has that you want to buy. But that's not the reality of it. The reality is 1066 gigabyte is 280 bucks. And so is the 570. The 580s are still outrageously overpriced. You can blame whoever you want for that. Retailers are certainly a large part of it. Again, look at Newegg. Vega 64 just had its whole stock refreshed. It looks like ASE pushed out a lot of the cards that were stuck in packaging and assembly. Well, they arrived at Newegg and they're still priced about $100 more than they should be. To be fair, they include the game pack, which has questionable value, but either way, it's 100 over MSRP, and that's with a whole new refresh of stock of Vega 64. So clearly, folks like Newegg are partially to blame. Their distributor might be to blame. We can't just put it all on Newegg or Best Buy. Who knows what their distributor is charging? Who knows what the AIB partners are charging? We kind of know what the AIB partners are paying, you can see our What Does HBM2 Cost video for that. But there's a lot of, it gets muddy in between AIBs, retailers, and what we end up paying. Who's taking all the extra cash? But either way, it doesn't have to be taken if you don't buy the card. So I don't know. I guess it just bothered me that, personally speaking, that coming from an official Twitter account from a company that has more or less implicitly stated that the uh, prices are being gouged out of the control of said company, AMD, it bothers me that they would go tweet and promote those inflated prices. There's a disconnect there. And it may come down to legal having a contract with Best Buy and XFX saying, we gotta, we gotta promote this. We have MDF with them. We have agreements with them. We have agreed to exchange social media exposure. And as such, we get these deals or these rebates or whatever it may be. That might be the case. That doesn't make it cool though. So I don't know, thank you for watching. I don't have much else to say on this. It was just kind of frustrating to me to see that after all this back and forth with AMD officially, with back and forth with AIB partners officially or unofficially, you hear the story as one thing being, we're looking out for consumers, we can't control this. And then you see the reality of it on a Twitter account. So AMD, if it appears like I'm frustrated, it's because I am, I'm sorry, but I'll tell you what it appears like the AMD accounts are doing, it looks two-faced. So whether or not that's the intention, perhaps consider the perception of what's going on rather than the intention behind the scenes. Thank you all for watching. You can subscribe for more or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help us out directly. These types of videos I'm sure don't make friends at the companies, but also things have to be said sometimes. And mining is a good enough cover for some things, but not for this. I'll see you all next time. There's a bug. Did you see it on the camera? Oh.